someday. In the not so distant future, it happens. The moment you realize you're ready for anything. Get a degree in emergency management from Jacksonville State University and be ready for where you're going. This is your Weather Extreme video for Saturday, April the 5th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. And there's a look at the sky cam from Birmingham. Had a front move through yesterday. It brought some rain on the order of, oh, anywhere from about a third of an inch to three quarters of an inch, it seems. So most areas getting on the order of about a half inch. Beautiful, beautiful shot from Decatur this morning with a few high clouds up there and uh, sun peeking over the horizon, over the uh, bridge, over the Tennessee River. Surface high is settling into the central Mississippi River Valley, but the frontal system that moved through here yesterday uh, will be along the Gulf Coast, and that will be returning Sunday, so it's a 50-50 weekend. That is, we'll have a pretty good day today, but then clouds and rain return on Sunday. The upper air pattern is uh, basically a bit of a, a weak ridge for the time being, as uh, one system moves off to our east, but another system off to our west coming into the Four Corners area will be ejecting out and producing a uh, surface low over the northwestern gulf that will move across the southeastern U.S. to the northeast, and that will produce the possibility for some strong to severe thunderstorms, especially along the central Gulf Coast. Temperatures this morning varied quite a lot across the area. Uh, our sky watcher up in uh, Black Creek reported frost once again with a morning low, I believe, of around 36. So not quite that cool in other spots, but we did dip down into the 40s in most locations. Radar basically free across the area. However, we do note that along the front, there are still some showers and thunderstorms occurring just offshore. QPF could be a problem over the next uh, five days. Uh, we have saturated ground, and the result is that any rain that falls is not likely to be soaked in much, and uh, so we have two threats. That is, additional rainfall will continue to swell streams, so it looks like you know the possibility of uh, flooding may ri raise its ugly head, as well as the possibility that any brief periods of heavy rain could produce flash flooding. So we'll have to be cognizant of that and you know be aware. The Storm Prediction Center is not out looking anything for day one. This is day two, which is Sunday into early Monday. And uh, looks like the big threat for that slight risk area will be uh, basically Monday, uh, Sunday afternoon and evening and into the early morning hours of Monday. For day three, it moves off to the east. All right, let's get the modeling and take a look at what's uh, expected to happen. There's the surface pattern for today at 18Z or 1 o'clock. High settling in over about St. Louis area in the upper atmosphere. We're coming under a ridge as the ridge pumps up a little bit in response to the developing trough coming out of the Four Corners area. By Sunday at midday, we see that uh, things are beginning to generate uh, a surface low in the northwestern gulf. And as it does, it's also bringing a bit of a warm front to the north. So the cold front that came through here yesterday is expected to come back to the north as a warm front on Sunday. So that should help to bring clouds and rain to the area. By uh, Monday at uh, midnight, well, uh, pardon me, Sunday night at midnight, or actually Monday at 1 a.m., we see the trough coming uh, into Arkansas and at the surface, we see once again that the warm front is basically positioned right across central Alabama. So that is part of the rub to determining exactly what's going to happen. By the time we get out to midday on Monday, uh, we see that the trough is coming through more or less in two pieces. We see one fairly strong trough coming out across the Mississippi River, but in the meantime, there's another one digging in across the Dakotas, uh, so it's going to allow the clouds and rain to stick around a little longer than it typically does. At the surface by midday on Monday, we see that the surface low is uh, moving up into the vicinity of uh, Louisville or so, uh, into the uh, Ohio River Valley, and we do see the cold front stretching down into the Mobile area, so it looks like the th severe weather threat would be over uh, by Monday midday. However, uh, we have got some uncertainties involved here. Let's take a look at some of the parameters, and here's a look at the uh, 
uh, 06Z, this would be uh, just uh, uh, 1 a.m. on uh, the uh, 7th, so that is uh, Monday Monday morning, and there's a look at the, the Cape values. They do peak a little bit, but they're the highest uh, around, and this is 12Z on Monday morning. They uh, do peak a little bit, but they stay the highest down along the Gulf Coast. Looking at some other parameters, too, uh, we see the bulk shear values. Are, and, of course, we're looking at instability with the Cape. Now we're looking at shear, and the shear values, the bulk shear values, basically fairly high uh, at, uh, once again, 1 a.m. on Monday. And then we see that they stay pretty high, uh, but they're highest down to the southwest uh, and also along the warm front over into Georgia. One of the biggest threats is that of uh, the possibility of damaging wind. And we look at the 925 millibar wind field, and we see that the winds are up around 50 knots. Uh, so uh, that high a wind speed just off the surface means that damaging wind becomes a real possibility. And uh, we note that uh, it stays that way as we head into uh, the early morning hours of Monday. This is uh, around sunrise or a little after sunrise uh, on Monday. So the, the problem is that the threat is definitely there. For um, the Storm Prediction Center's outlook, the area of greatest risk for Alabama to be in southwest corner, but we've got to watch that uh, how far north that warm front gets and uh, whether we have a problem. By Tuesday, uh, the trough is beginning to gel as one piece is moving out, another piece is moving into the bottom of the trough, and so that should allow us to stay cloudy as well as see perhaps some light rain with the clouds sticking around. The, uh, the whole trough situation gels and moves off to the east by Wednesday, so I think we start the day out cloudy Wednesday and see conditions improving. It'll be a coolish day with temperatures Wednesday and Tuesday as well in the 60s. By the time we get to Thursday, it looks like uh, we're more or less under kind of a ridge, but the ridge being flattened by the main uh, westerlies well to our north. We see that pattern stick with us on Friday as we have more or less a zonal flow uh, due in part to the fact that it's it's more of a ridge than anything else. By the time we get to Saturday, we're now watching the next development coming out of the Rockies as another shortwave trough uh, comes out of the southern Rockies. And that's uh, once again likely to produce a surface low over west Texas and also bring moisture back up into the uh, Mississippi, uh, the lower Mississippi River Valley. So it looks like we'll be watching that for the first part of uh, next week. By looking at Monday, and now we're out into voodoo country, we see that trough coming out across the central Mississippi River Valley. So that looks like another round of potentially wet weather as well as the threat. It doesn't look especially strong right now, but... After all, it is April, so some threat for severe weather possibilities. And then we get out to the end of the period, around 348 hours. This is the 19th of April at midday, and basically another very strong system that uh, is likely to be bringing a severe weather threat uh, to some locations in the southern and central United States. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video. I expect to have the next one posted uh, first thing on Sunday morning and at least by 8 a.m. or so. In the meantime, I hope that you have a great Saturday and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.